Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here. I got something special for you guys today. I am doing an interview with one of my boot camp graduates, hopefully one of many interviews that I'm going to um, be putting out there to kind of show what we do in the Environment Artist Boot Camp and give people a sense of kind of like how it's, what, it, what its power is, why you would take it and how it can help you. All right, and then along the way here, I'm going to actually ask Nalima, who I'm, who's I'm interviewing today, to to help explain something important to you, something that was important to her that she figured out, and help her, uh, you kind of understand how you can get really great results. So stay with me through the duration of this um, of this little webinar here. We're going to do a little bit of an introduction, and then we're going to get into uh, kind of unpacking one of her models and how she developed the look of it inside of Substance Painter. So there's going to be a lot to learn, so stay tuned for that. So Nalima, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. So tell me, uh, let's talk a little bit about your background. Where, uh, What were you doing before you came into the boot camp? Uh, so um, I moved to uh, the West Coast uh, maybe like a few years ago. Uh, but when I lived on the East Coast, I, I worked um, in professionally in architectural visualization. Mm -hmm. And I worked for a lot of architecture firms and some design firms. And, um, you know, once I moved out here, I, you know, really started to get interested in, in environments for games and, uh, you know, environments in general. Um, and, you know, uh, trying to really you know, get into something that was more exciting and more interesting for me. Mm. Um, what did so, you do yeah. at the, uh, in Arch Ar Archivist? What kind of aspect were you doing? Modeling? Were you doing environment? Like the, the whole kind of stuff? Oh, everything. Yeah, everything. It was like um, from the modeling. And I used 3D Max back then because yeah. you use 3D Max a lot for architecture. Um, and then uh, just everything, materials, textures, uh, rendering, uh, presentations for clients. So, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, while it was while it was fun, and you know, it wasn't as exciting for me and as, like, creative because yeah. a lot of it is directed by the architect or the designer. And, you know, you're there for, you're there for presentations. So, right. um, you know, yeah. And, right. you know, back then they didn't have substance, which I would have loved if they, if they had it. I would have used it. But, you know, they didn't have anything like that. So it was all just, like, loading in textures one by one, yeah. and wrapping was done manually and in Photoshop. So, yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. So the Environment Artist Bootcamp is really designed to kind of uh, take you from that to a totally different job. So what is it that um, the that got you attracted to the bootcamp? Um, so I, I thought the whole program was just really comprehensive. Like mm -hmm. you go over many different things that, you know, it takes to develop a space, um, you know, everything from modular building to, uh, you know, unwrapping and texturing and then final, you know, finally bringing it all together in uh, Marmoset or Unreal. Yeah. You know, um, it just seemed like a, a, a really great way to, you know, learn everything uh, in a focused way mm -hmm. um, and in a way that, you know, and also the fact that we had two meetings every week, at least for me, yeah. was really, really helpful because it kind of, it kind of makes you want to keep working. You know, you're like, oh, I have class on Thursday. Like I want to get this done by then. So, yeah, yeah. or, you know, I want to show my teachers all this stuff. So uh, it really, really helped to, to have that focus and have that direction. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all of those things, you know, made it really interesting and, that's great. So what do you think is the one thing that the boot camp really did for you and your uh, work? Uh, it, well, for me, it, it, it basically it made me like learn so much. Hmm. Uh, it, it made me just discover a whole, like I had to learn Unreal for the first time. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot more ZBrushing techniques that I learned. There mm. was um, Substance Designer, which I really hadn't used before and, you know, had learned how powerful, it's such a powerful program, um, you know, and it, it was all these different things that, you know, you I had never even touched upon before. And, you know, to have, like, your teachers, you know, with their expertise, just, like, telling you how to do it correctly, you know, that all that really helped. So, 
Um, That's great. Uh, and you know, and I was yeah. able to have a, a finished piece by by the end of the, the program. So that was several nice. finished pieces, I think. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Um, how was, uh, and I, I've been meaning to ask everybody this, but how was the crit versus the lecture? Because I know in the beginning part of when you first started this, I, I said this to everybody pretty much that, you know, we're really crit focused. We'll give a little bit of a demonstration, but, you know, you should be expected to learn and spend, you know, 10 hours just learning software and stuff like that. Like how valuable was it to you to have crit as opposed to, sitting there and watching somebody lecture or what was your experience there? And, you know, if you'd change anything, what would it be? Um, it was extremely valuable, you know, and, um, you know, both Sean L and Melissa have very different, you know, perspectives on mm -hmm. things also yeah. and to get feedback from both of them in different ways. Um, it's extremely useful because, you know, they're going to, they're looking at your model and then they're pointing out things that need to be improved on things that you can easily change, things that, you know, and all the other students get to see it too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's just, that instant feedback is, you know, uh, really amazing. Uh, of course, they're also available, you know, they were also available to us, you know, outside of class. Um, they, you know, were very generous with their time. So, um, cool. you know, you can that's ask why. them as many questions as you want and, you know, just there's no limits to that. So, awesome. yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So, all right. Now, um, if you want to learn no, more about Nalima, we're looking at her art station right now. You can see the environment is off to the bottom uh, left. That's the environment with the lighting and all that that she created. And then inside there, you're going to see one, two, three, four, five, I think five different props that kind of come from there. Click the about page. You can find out how to get a hold of Nalima. And uh, so right now, Nalima, you're looking for work, right? I sure am. Yeah. And, and um, in the Los Angeles area, am I correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Ideally. So, yeah. Ideally. <laughs> Let's yes. take a quick look at your frame because I know this is one of the topics I want to talk to you about later. So I want to bring it up now and then we're going to uh, take a look at the cabinet in a second and uh, look at that inside of Substance and maybe inside of ZBrush. Um, uh, but I know this one went through a lot of the iterations to kind of craft the look of this. Mm -hmm. tell yeah, me the, I mean, tell me about the experience of making this. Um, so from the start, like, uh, this was, this is like one of the first pieces that I've sculpted, mm -hmm. really sculpted in ZBrush. So, you know, I had to, had to look at a lot of tutorials and things like that. But, yeah. um, so that was, that was super challenging, but a lot of fun. Like I just really enjoy I didn't realize how much I enjoyed it until, you know, I actually started doing it. So uh, that was a lot of fun. The texturing, you know, I kind of had maybe two or three layers at, at the most. Yeah. And um, uh, it was, you know, after, you know, we had our uh, critique session with you as well after the course, um, you know, you kind of pointed out how I can improve on it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make it look more vintage and make it really look aged or, you know, how the, well, the way they paint the wood to make it look aged. Um, you know, I went through, went back through all the layers and, and just really tried to, you know, add more detail. And, and I can show you that painter file as well, if you like. So, okay. Well, um, why don't we drop over yeah. to the cabinet, look at that on art station so that everybody can see the um, high res. Cause one of the things that's important to me is that in the boot camp, and we've gone over this in the boot camp, it's important that, um, that you have the pre a certain presentation so that this is something that somebody can come in and they can instantly see the texture or in game, they can see the high res sculpt. And we use a high res sculpting, uh, approach um, and then you can see the maps to see how clean they are and things like that so this is what we're going to take a look at and you can see the reference in the upper um, right of it uh, you can see that's the picture up there in the little corner uh, so why don't we hop into substance take a look at this see if we can start to unpack how you started to develop the look of the piece yeah sure um, so there here's we the file now, um, um, su was Substance new to you when you started this? Uh, sort of. Like I, I it was I was at a beginner level, mm -hmm. so I knew how to set up a file and open it and bake the textures. Yep. That's kind of it. So. All right, and uh, <laughs> um, again, so learning while while 
<laughs> learning while studying. So yeah, that's my belief. You have to learn to build uh, the airplane while it's in the air. I mean, in this industry, it changes <laughs> too fast for you to do anything else. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and so yeah. that's what was really key. And you know, you really excelled at um, at picking this stuff up. So why don't you explain what is substance painter for somebody who hasn't ever um, seen that before? What is it to you? Um, so Substance Painter is a software developed by Allegro Rhythmic, the company, this company is in, uh, I believe they're French based. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, it is a program that allows you to texture, um, in a non-destructive way. Um, I highly, highly recommend it to anyone who wants to be like up to date with these things and you know just make life easier for themselves it's a, it's an amazing piece of software um you know and uh the requirements for like texturing these days like you have to work with a with a you know a pbr workflow mm -hmm. and you have to work with a like a, a metal roughness mm -hmm. or like a specular glossy workflow and this software just makes things so much easier and you know if you just take a few tutorials and you just like get on it, you know, you would, you'll be there in no time and you'll really, really enjoy it. It makes texturing a lot of fun. So what, what do you mean by non-destructive workflow? Um, so I would assume if you weren't using painter, you would go yeah. into, you know, Photoshop and lay everything out and paint it in Photoshop and, and do everything. Yeah. And then, you know, if you, I guess if you're in a professional setup and then like your supervisor comes out and says, uh, this cabinet is like way too green. Like you just need to change it. Instead of like having to do all that other work, like you just go in and change like this color, and you're done. Like it's so instant mm. the feedback. Uh, if you need to, for example, also change the normals or any normal information, or say like your director comes out and says. Oh, I, you know, I just, these are not going to work. Like mm -hmm. you just need to get rid of them. All right. So you go back in and you can actually take the normals out or you can um, rebake the entire model uh, and the textures get updated. They don't uh, change. Uh. So, you know, you could, you could do, you know, all of that a, a lot quicker now um, and it's a lot easier. So. Great. All right. So, um, how do you approach developing the look of something? And I and I know this is something that we went really back and forth on um, you and I because we added that kind of four week accelerator at the end. And um, yeah. And so my key was to keep you grinding. Like the goal for me was to keep you grinding on these pieces. And you know, you were just getting them better and better every time. So why don't you walk me through your thinking for? you know, the way in which you approach the look dev or, or the look of this piece. And then we can start to talk about like how you grind it on the details to get the, you know, to get the particular kind of layering of paint to, to um, happen. But let's start first with like, how do you even start with setting up? Um, setting up a look. Um, so actually before we had that accelerator course, um, yeah. all I had was like a green paint fill layer on this and, you know, maybe one mask or something like that. So, yeah. uh, and then, you know, I went back in and kind of, you kind of really have to paint it in the way that the, you know, the prop, the uh, cabinet would probably have been painted, mm -hmm. I feel like so, uh, or created. So, you know, you start with like a, a wood layer. And I just made like two different ones because I wasn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a carpenter, but, um, you know, I, I thought maybe the grain would look better going this way up here and then maybe this way on the sides. So and how are you I painting made, this? Like, are, are you using textures, reference, something inside yeah, the substance? Um, for this one, I use like a, a, a smart material. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I just used a material. So, um, the wood wood chest and I think it's in here but um the nice thing about it is you get all these like all these things that you can mess with all these controls here's the base for it um and then 
the material that it came with all, I mean, I already set this all up and, you know, especially if you're in a hurry during boot camp, yeah. um, you can use like, <laughs> yeah, you can use like substance source, you know, you, I would highly recommend going to a substance source as well. They have a lot of amazing materials and, you know, you can just click this button and download. Um, uh, or you want to like, you know, you just want to take the sharpen out and, you know, uh, you can mess with all of these settings if you like. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it started with that. Um, you know what, this actually strikes me as a really good moment and maybe a great teaching moment for us um, because this, like so much of this, uh, number one, that's pretty fast. You just grabbed one of the materials inside of Substance, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you mind, I know I didn't prepare you for this at all, but do you mind <laughs> kind of like walking us through that step by step, like maybe even starting over or adding another material in there just so somebody can see you know, what they could do in the first, I, I mean, it, maybe even 10 minutes, you know? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, you would, so let's just take this fine walnut, for mm -hmm. example. And, and you're just moving it over into your stack. Exactly. Drop it in there. Now, it's going across the whole object, but uh, what I would do is bring it into this group here. And how is that group defined? There. So this group is defined by... It's called the cabinet uh, frame. Okay, got it. Yeah, hold it and then um, it's a folder. So you would basically create this folder. Yep. And then um, what I would recommend, if you're working with all these different parts like this object has, like legs, doors, mm -hmm. drawers, uh, bake an ID map from... Uh, you can set up the ID map in uh, Maya very easily. Um, and so um, I would definitely recommend doing that because you set up your folder yeah. and then you add a mask with color selection and then you go into your color selection and then you can actually pick the color of the ID. There and so that allows you to constrain to that part. Yeah. And then you can just layer and do how it, whatever you want. So. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically it. You can okay. just, but so you want to make sure to add the color selection to the folder and not to like an individual layer. Like how how do we add the color selection? Uh, so say for example, so you go to this folder. You can right click and say add mask with color selection. Okay. And then you pick your color. And then this is where you start to, um, you know, add your fill layers. You can just drag and drop and drag and drop into that folder, and then. Um, and the fill layer is like just a solid color that gets applied to the whole thing, right? Yeah, um, right. I definitely recommend using fill layers. Yeah. Um, the most. Um, yeah, I've seen some amazing techniques with the fill layers where they use the mask and then sometimes I think the mask has a noise in it or something of that nature. Like there's a lot you can do. Yeah, there's definitely a lot. Um, it has a, there's a lot more um, options for you right. to work with if you do work with the layer. So that's kind of how you set it up. And then now you might um, assign the material under this layer set. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, you know, this would be the layer and say you just want to use your your walnut. Great, got it, yep. Uh, that would be in there. And then um, that's because it's already got some settings, you know, which makes your life easier, you just go back down and, and change whatever you need to. So if the- So what would we adjust mm -hmm. in this, um, what is it? You said it is a walnut, okay. Uh, walnut, yeah, I mean, you can change the tiling for it, the rotation for it, um, the offsetting for it, you can also, I guess if the height is too much, you can turn off the height altogether. Okay. Or you can like, you know, each one's gonna have a setting where you can change, like, height range. I guess would be the one. Right. Okay. Good. So it's not as like it was a little so. dramatic. Now it's better. Yeah. Um, normal intensity. Maybe you can take that down. So mm -hmm. most of the materials have all these like settings within them. So yeah. Uh, yeah. You can do all of that stuff here, and they kind of ex they made these materials and exposed all these parameters for you to use. So um, you know that's that's kind of how I did the the bottom layers for 
um, for this piece, which, yeah. Like that, and then, so yeah, you just have to tweak a lot of things and get the look you want. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, the best suggestion is to really figure out how the, the object was really made and then layer it exactly like that. So, um, you know, I have the wood here and then layered on paint. So I have like two different layers. Yeah. And that's what uh, you had when we started the accelerator, right? It was real, it was real simple. I remember it looked like wood, but it didn't look like paint. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I mean, it just looked like that. So, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, maybe a little better, but yeah. So, um, you know, and then on this layer, if you can see here, this green paint, mm -hmm. um, I have a height map on it Okay. to get some of these really like cool little dents and stuff. Yeah. I see it. Uh -huh. um, and that's and then, out of ZBrush, right? Uh, this, no, this I actually created it in, in Painter. So Sweet. when you're baking yeah. your high poly to low poly, it's going to generate all these maps. And then any mask you use is going to use these maps for information. So okay. uh, it probably used like one of those maps um, to, to generate that. So like if we go in here, you probably use my curvature. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the curvature the, is like a height map, if I remember correctly, right? Inside substance? Um, I think, well, the, cur the curvature is like um, a map that generates information on the concave and the like convex okay. uh, information. So yeah. whatever you're baking, you know, it'll, it'll take that detail. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want like, you know, more dirt in a certain area, it's going to take that information. Like cavity map, maybe. Cavity, sort of like a cavity it. map, yeah. Yeah. Uh, As we so, say this, somebody's going to leave a comment in this video of exactly what curvature is. So I'm looking for that video or that comment. It, yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> if anyone has more information on what exactly a curvature map is. So. This is actually one of the keys. <laughs> <nerd> in the, <laughs> one of the important <laughs> things in the boot camp for me is this kind of, it's this evolution that you don't have to have all the answers. You just have to be ready to go. And um, we can, as yeah. artists, I mean, we can get stuck in this loop of like, I got to know, I got to know, I got to know. And, I, and I we agree, want yeah. it, you know, I, we want it because it makes us feel comfortable, right? It like makes us feel comfortable that we can produce when somebody hires us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we all know that mm -hmm. guy or that girl that like knows everything, but can't actually do the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really not the way to go. I would, I mean, if I did that, I would probably like kill myself. It's so hard. Yeah. Um, you know, you really have to do, you have to basically learn what you need to do to develop the look of your piece and, and focus on the, the creative and the artistic side of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, and this, is, the this is great seeing you talk through this too, because um, seeing that, okay, so now once, you've got that basic on there. Now you're starting to add the details. So this is done yeah. with a green paint layer, but. Yeah. So I just like, you know, I kind of imagined if someone was actually painting this, they would mm -hmm. probably do a few, couple of layers. Yeah. So just do like one layer and then paint another layer, um, you know, with a different mask on it. Um, and if you want to see a mask and what a mask looks like, you just hit alt and click on the mask. So you can kind of see what it's doing. and That's the kind of thing where it's like that. You, know. you can get into that mode and then never remember how to get out. <laughs> oh, so. well, literally you just alt click, click back on your material. So Good. yeah, but you want to all click on the, on the mask portion. Or click on the, the mask, one, so. click on the material yeah. to get out of it. Just in case anybody yeah. does this and they get stuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Substance Painter can be like that a little bit. You're like, wait. This was easy and it's not anymore. So, um, so anyway, I have like a lot of dust and dirt layers. So that, that last one um, made a difference. Can you turn that last one on and off again? This one? Yeah. Uh, so this, what was your thinking here? Because this was after you and I, we started to have our accelerator meetings, I think. So what happened here? Because that makes, uh, yeah. makes an instant impact. Yeah. Um, 
so you know uh again going into like making it have some hi have some history and mm -hmm. making it layered uh you know i thought maybe like some scuffing and some you know uh extra stuff on the on the on these edges here would be interesting and, and you know and what is it is it uh is it painted is it some procedural it's just a yeah it's a smart mask so smart i kind mask. of this is my idea of what a dirt color would look like mm -hmm. i have no idea that's just something i did so looks um, like dirt. i'm down it, it looks like dirt to me so you know <laughs> uh and then uh this is kind of what the smart mask does it kind of just goes in and, and takes you know adds this really nice subtle layer to you know the whole object so and we should um, mention that it's pulling from i think that's pulling from your normal map out of zbrush right or your sculpt out of zbrush i should say not normal map yeah it's uh probably pulling from that and again curvature mm -hmm. if you go into the mask editor settings for anything you can actually just play around with this stuff and see what it can do um, so you can have the smart mask actually pull from different things yeah so like nice. right now my world space normal is turned off but you can just go in and you can mm -hmm. add more of that if you want and then that's how you um, get a little bit more of this random um uh, quality to it yeah exactly and um you, know, you can go into your position map even and then you yeah. know just go instead of going top to bottom you can go like right to left or something if you want to change the the flow and mm -hmm. you can even go into all these blending modes and change all of that yeah um so it's really it's really powerful. like it's just so much fun uh if anything painter gives you too many options so you don't mm. know where to stop so <laughs> um you know so that's kind of but it but it's a lot of fun and you know these are being generated with some texture maps and mm -hmm. the inputs are here you can always change this you can just like you know go in and add another map if you want um, and then did, add did a second one. Did you select one of one of their like just one of their default textures? Uh, just one of their defaults because mm -hmm. you know it worked just fine. Yeah. So, uh, and again, you know, I added a little uh, filter on there for to sharpen. Sometimes things get a little too blurry, and you want you know, you just want it to be a little more defined. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I worked for each of these layers, um, and so. Uh, this is the first one, and then I tried like different masks, and these are all the smart masks here mm -hmm. um, that you can uh, again, like I sh like I was saying, you can edit and customize. Um, so this is the second one, and then yeah. this is the third one to add. Just you know, I like this one because it just gave these dancing things a little more. Um, uh, depth yeah just totally. kind of give everything like a nice it, little it looks yeah. like it got um because you had the bigger dents it looked like it got a little bit smaller amplitude noise in there a little bit more frequency yeah, yeah exactly and i think yeah this one also has a height map enabled oh mm -hmm. maybe not maybe not just the normal so um so that <clears throat> and then um some more let me see just really subtle layers. Yeah. I mean, the reason I have them on so many different layers is so that I can have control over each one and, and kind of, if I don't, if I end up just not liking it, and, you know, just get rid of it. So, um, yeah. and then this one, I actually dialed back a bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, this one's, it was almost like an overall dust on everything. I. I figure this was like an old piece that just wasn't like you know um dusted and you know it's been sitting there for months like that so you know just added like a little extra layer with a different color um so yeah so that's the and does that, uh, kind does, of that the workflow. does that dust have a uh, height map to it or height uh, attached mm, no yeah okay. most of them really don't like Unless you're looking to get like those dents and things and like some real difference, yeah, like these guys here, yeah, or this here, um, you know, I I don't know, I don't I don't really use the height map too much unless unless I need to. So great. Uh, so but that's me, what's really fun about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me see if I can summarize and unpack this um, a little bit further. So uh, there is the basic stage where you establish the, the base color, so the green, and you're bringing in all the maps, right, that you've got. Uh, or actually, you're generating the maps inside a substance, or did you use hand plane? Uh, no, I baked, I, I usually bake everything in substance just because it's just, it's easier to bake in here and then, you know, you're working in here. Yeah. So, uh, that's kind of nice. Okay. So um, you bring the high res ZBrush information in, you've got your low res yeah. that you pulled in as well that you did. And then you're yeah. using substance to generate your normal map. Um, you, in Maya, I think you said you did the ID map. And so what other maps do you use generate from your high res? Um, no, this is these are it. You get your normal, normal. your world space, ambient occlusion is kind of important. Yep. Curvature, position, thickness. Um, you do all of these. Well, thickness, I guess you would use that for subsurface. Um, but you know, it also you can use it for all your other masks, whichever masks pull pull it or pull this information. Sure. Um, yeah, ID map like kind of yeah kind of helpful, very helpful to to use. Yeah. Do you generate um, it here or outside of here? Uh, in here, yeah. Okay. So you would have to basically set up your ID map in Maya by just uh, giving each part a different material. Yes. And then you bring it in and... Um, as an OBJ uh, or as a Maya file? Uh, as You can bring in an OBJ. Okay. Yeah, not Maya. I think you have to do FBX or, or uh, OBJ. Okay, but some, um, some file format that keeps the groups, because I know in the OBJ text file, you know, it separates faces by groups. So if it's exported yeah, you out would, of Maya that way, that is. Yeah, you would, like, get rid of this high FBX here, and then yep. you would load your ID map and then, um, you know, bake away. Got it. Um, the mesh by name feature, I'm sure everyone's watched tutorials on this, and, you know, again, really, really great. Highly recommend using it. It saves a lot of time. You don't have to go into Maya and explode your mesh, and you don't mm -hmm. have to like do all that stuff. You know, it's just super useful. So, all right, so uh, that's stage one. Yeah. You bring in, you bake your maps, and you establish a basic, um, yeah. a basic color, and that's where you were before the accelerator. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then so the next thing that happens is is you start creating. I mean. You know, there's not a lot of language around this, but I'm starting to say it's just you start to create localize your detail, basically. Localize the wear and tear. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, yeah. you just have to kind I you know, you just, you kind of have to have a good eye for all of this. I mean, these guys, these masks are amazing, and you can do all of that. But, you know, some of these layers, you'll have to paint away some, some details. Mm -hmm. there, there's a mask. That yeah. you just like, for example, in this layer with the height map enabled. Yeah. I was like, all right, I like these details, but I kind of really don't like these. Yeah. And so you add a paint layer. Just uh, right click yeah. and say add paint, and you just take away all that information. Yeah. So super useful, um, and you know, really a lot of control over what you're doing. All right. And so the the basic yeah. recipe is it um, is you get one of these just solid layers, solid color layers, right? And apply some sort of mask, and then apply some sort of um, filters to them uh, to kind of get that working, you know, in a couple of different ways as well as adjusting your mask. Is that accurate or not? Yeah. No, that's that's it. Um, you know, and you can just play around. You can add. Um, like there's so many different filters you can use there's like sharpen and blur and mm -hmm. uh, blur directional and you know all this really cool stuff so um, okay. yeah you can just you can add generators you can even add like your own maps if you want mm -hmm. and experiment with those so that's kind of nice to have that uh, ability to to do that, you can just come up with your own stuff. So uh, yeah, that's that's kind of it. And so you know, everything um, has some sort of you know paint layer on it. Um, some of them don't, but it looks like. And what are these layers most. called again? Each one of these layers. What what was it that you call it inside a substance? Uh, these layers. Yeah. Um. No, the, the I mean, main I, layer, not the adjustments, but... 
Like um, dirt four is what? How do you create it? Oh, these are just fill layers. Fill yeah. layers, great. These are all fill layers. Yeah. Yeah, I love that because it's it's fill layer and it's so based on this idea of you you know like because we do this inside of Photoshop, right? Is you create a layer, then you you know color blended, dodge something like that, and then you know you throw masks on it. So it's just just such a powerful workflow. Um, one of the things that I think is important to kind of touch on is um, as you went through this, you created, you know, it started to get this real sense of wear and tear and this real sense of life, right? And it's, this is an old piece, so that's the goal. Um, were you able to, how do I say this? Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that with our eye, we have to almost like we have to train our eye to see everything. And so I see you have like about seven layers here. And um, if you were to do this all in one layer, do you think you would have been able to see everything and do it all in one layer? Or does each one of these layers like help you even see what's possible? Does that make sense? Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I recommend working with several layers. I mean, um, that uh, working on a single layer with all the detail, yeah. It kind of defeats the purpose of having like a non-destructive workflow. Like you right. want to be able to take away whatever you want yeah. and add in whenever you, you know whatever you want whenever. So um, definitely don't recommend doing that. That would be, um, you know, that would be a little pointless. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Well, um, let me uh, let me ask you yeah. this because I, I know this might take a moment of our time. But do you have that frame? Um, in the uh, yeah. file for that frame. Do you mind if we open that up, and uh, and we just kind of look at that for one second, and then I think I um I think we should have we should have probably presented a pretty good amount for people by that point. Uh, yeah, and the, and I hope then, so. Great, thanks. So for 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 the for you who are watching this, the key thing that I want you to see there's a couple of things. One, I want you to number one be introduced to Nalima, uh, higher Nalima. You can see here the work that she's yes, thank you. done. <laughs> and also you notice how she's explaining substance, right? Like there's a reason why I'm asking her these questions. And it's because, you know, you want somebody on your team who can explain these things and kind of talk through the process and help explain it to everybody else and, and things like that. And education is a big part of my life. It's a big part of, of for me, it's a big part of my learning process is, is teaching. Um, you know, and then also just these are the new tools that really make a difference in somebody's career. Like there's a lot of information out there in ZBrush. You know, I've put a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people putting information out there today on that. Um, things like Substance and things like Marvelous Designer, they're not at the same level in terms of the, um, the saturation uh, as ZBrush. So this is a really good point. It's a good piece of software actually for people like Nalima and my bootcamp students for you guys to really go out there and shine and show that you have what it takes to kind of move the needle and you know this frame is I think you know a fantastic calling card for Nalima because this um, showcases the amount of work that she did so let's take a look at this stack it only looks like what four layers what's going on here Five. yeah this is pretty simple <laughs> um, it's got a uh, gold Material again from from here from yeah. uh, I think here the gold pure that I used. So just so, a simple. You know, can you turn everything else off so we can just see that? Yeah, sure. Wow. Um, okay. It's so kind Got of it. It. yeah. Yeah. And is there any adjustments um, on this, or is it pretty straightforward? Uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, it, it had is. yeah um, this little layer. I think it already had. Let me see here. Um, this is probably not it then. Maybe it was a smart material. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's a smart material. Okay. So it came so, pretty much just like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, even if you didn't have that, all it all it really is 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 a layer with your metallic on. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever working with the metallic roughness, like you just want to make sure your metallic is either metallic or non-metallic like mm -hmm. zero one so um that's kind of it and i think they use a dirt on it so that's kind of how they set that up that's great and so this is a basic so that's awesome and then what's the next yep. layer you add um and so i watched i saw this like i found this information on the internet like how they hmm kind of make these frames and stuff so you have your wooden base again there's i should have made like a 
a wooden base here and then built on it, but yeah. maybe I'll go back in and do that after. Um, so, you know, they add this like umber paint on it or some kind of finish on it to give it like this muted look. Do they wipe it away so that it's the high points don't have it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, they like, it's really crafty and, and fun to do. It's yeah. just like something cool to do. So, and then, um, just add like a layer of white paint. So kind of like a first wash almost. Yeah. This is where I and, saw it, um, in one moment. And then we were like, we gotta, we just gotta level it up. Yeah. Gotta level it up. And then you can add like, again, you can take away or add, or like, if you want, if I ever want, want some of these de details to pop, I would just add a paint layer on. And then, um, and oh, wait, sir, sorry, before you go to the next one. So does this have a smart mask on it? Uh, yes. Yeah. And what kind of details are you adjusting with that smart? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So this is probably using curvature and a couple of other things. Yeah, definitely. They're all in there. Ambient occlusion is in here. Okay. It's using position too. So I think I adjusted some of these settings to, to make okay. it you know, what I wanted it. So, okay, got it. um, yeah. And, um, so that's kind of nice. Of course you can always like, I mean, you can always play with these settings too. Like, if you want this finish to look like more interesting, you could use overlay instead, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, give it a little more depth, or you know, but it might be a right bit there. much. Yeah, then you can fix your opacity. Um, so there's that, and then um, have the mm. the other layer that um, I added on that. I kind of, you know, I wasn't really sure at this point what I was trying to do, but right. it looked cool. So I was like, I'm going to keep this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, it just was like, you know, I, I imagined like they painted this on, but then over time it just started chipping away maybe uh -huh. the paint. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I just, it's just really great. Like how it reads all these details and how it just like, you know, it's not, it's not like you have to do some work, but you don't really have to do, like, you don't have to like kill yourself. Yeah. And if you like blur, you can take away the blur if you want it to be sharper. I think I may want that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, I remember in class, like Melissa was talking about how to add like, you know, color variation in your material so you can yeah. get more interest out of it and make it look more interesting. Yeah, and, switch that you know, on that was off with, again. Yeah, that was with like substance paint, uh, substance designer. Mm -hmm. um, but you can use that here too. And, you know, just um, add mm -hmm. a little more um, interest to the piece. So um, that umber added, comes through a little more here. Yeah, exactly. You know, and again, I used a color um, dodge or color burn on this. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Color burn? No, I used the color dodge. No. I guess I used color. <laughs> yeah. So to add more saturation and you know yeah. make it look more interesting. So that's kind of it. And you know, after you're done, like you're working with all these materials, you know, start your own library, start making your own, you know, smart materials and give everything a folder, put them in a folder. Can you turn this it. into a smart material? Yeah, so just uh, make your folder, make sure everything's in there, right click, create smart material. Awesome. So, you know, you can use it for other projects and, you know, start. I already made one here, it looks like. Yeah. So, you know, you definitely start doing that. Um, you never know when you may need it later on. So, I wonder what this um, would look like on your cabinet. Oh, well, that's interesting. We could, I guess we could try. Why don't we try it real quick? And that'll help people. Because one of the things about substance is it's a different way of thinking. Like right? in the early days of ZBrush, it was a different way of thinking. I spent my time teaching people how to think like ZBrush and uh, substance man it just it's a similar kind of um, new way of thinking okay so let's see this should be interesting just put it on top of everything And it's just so fast, like it just cuts through everything so quickly. It's just so awesome. I love Painter. Oh, it's just calculating. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of cool. That is really awesome. 
Oh my god. Wow, styling like a gold cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right. Well, Nalima, I think this is a great place to end this because I think you just added some enormous value to some people's lives. So if you guys like this, cool. what you saw, make sure you leave a comment uh, down below this video. And also, Nalima, do you want to head over to your art station? Uh, sure. Yeah. And then follow her on art station. Yes, please. Yep. Please do. Please connect and reach out if you need help or freelance work or work anything anything <laughs> i'm <Same>. here <laughs> all <Yeah>. right <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and for for giving us that you know that's really awesome sure you're very welcome all right thank so you. guys yeah absolutely guys you know where to find her right there on art station and uh you know as of now she's looking for work so if you know if you got an environment artist position uh you can see the work right here you just heard her um so you got everything you need to make your decisions all right. If you want to know more about the Environment Artist Boot Camp, head over to GameArtInstitute.com, and it'll be right there. You just scroll down a little bit. There's the Character Artist Boot Camp, and then there's the Environment Artist Boot Camp. They're right there. Have a fantastic day. And again, Nalima, thanks so much. You're welcome. Take care, everyone. All right. Take care.